I've been working really hard stepping up my Fusion 360 game this year. I've had it for a couple years and I still don't feel like I know what I'm doing in there all the time. So I wanted to take a little bit of time this weekend to work on the newish sheet metal function that they have in there and really familiarize myself with it. I decided to pick kind of a fun project, just keep myself interested in it because if I'm just doing boxes and pans, it's gonna drive me nuts learning this. So why don't you guys check this out with me? We're gonna build a Mjolnir, a ancient Norse mythological hammer, and I think it's a really cool way to show you guys how the sheet metal tool works with the flanges and miters and all that good stuff. Let's get rolling. I'm not gonna go into how to navigate around in here so much. Uh, I'm really gonna leave that up to you guys to kinda learn the basic functions here. Plenty of YouTube videos on those, but what I'm excited about is the sheet metal function right here. So the first step you wanna do is go over here to modify and select sheet metal rules. And this is where you set your thickness, right, of your material. So we're gonna do one divided by 16, because it's 1 16th, gives us 0 0.0625 inches. So come back over here, and we're gonna put 0 0.0625 inches for our thickness of material. The bend condition, relief width. So this is where you set your opening, I guess, between flanges. This is basically your weld joint that you're setting up here. I'm gonna set this back to thickness right now and I'll come back here and show you guys later what that does exactly. It'll make more sense a little further on in the build. So we got our thickness set here. It automatically does the K factor. Let's close this out. And now we're ready to start drawing. So let's pick this top origin right here and we are going to create a sketch there. Now we're going to pick two point rectangle. I have my units default set to inches so you see right here where it's, it's prompting me to write in inches the plans I found didn't have inches they had metric so what you guys can do here is you can just straight up see I was trying to say 103 inches if I just type in mm millimeters it automatically figures it out tab over to my other dimension 163 not inches mm millimeters oh I accidentally typed an extra letter in there mm now it knows what we're talking about here, right? So now that you have your shape set up, we're going to not extrude this, we're going to create a flange. Usually you'd hit E arrow here and you'd pull this thing up as far as you want to go. But this is looking towards those sheet metal instructions we set up over here uh, for the thickness instead of using the extrude tool. So we just say we want a flange. So here's our flange. If uh, you're a bit persnickety, you can pick which side you want it, side one, side two, or that, that plane you draw can also be the symmetric center. Uh, for this project, it doesn't really matter, but that's what that little drop down menu does. Okay, so now that we have this flange, not an extruded sheet like I would normally do in here, all are now live, and we can start to create new flanges off of this. So you select this flange tool right here and you want to select the edges you want the flanges to start at. So you can select multiples at once and now this is like the extrude tool you just draw it up and I am going to use some dimensions I pulled off that print 21 mm for millimeters and then you can press tab and now you're in the degrees field and this is a 45 degree angle. Hit enter and we have our flanges here with the K factor, the stretch in this bend radius already figured out for the real thickness. Pretty amazing. So where do we go from here? We need some more flanges. So let's work this guy up. I'm only gonna do this on one side here Oh, and let's check this dimension. Yeah, 103, same, same. Okay, we're gonna do 103 millimeters up, and then tab over, 45 degrees. We got our next flange. Let's do another one. We're gonna work our way all the way around. 
come out 21 millimeters just like the other corner tab 45 degrees and enter new flange pick our corner see if I pick this outside corner it's trying to draw it that way I'm going to pick this inside corner it will just make my life a little bit easier there we go so now same I can go 103 oh I gotta drag start dragging this first so now I got 103 millimeters tab 45 degrees and we're slowly working our way around here guys starting to look like something now drag this down what are we doing again 21 millimeters tab 45 degrees enter and we got one last side to do this is looking nice one more flange One hundred three mm, tab over forty five degrees again, and it gets this little warning right here because it says these two faces are going to overlap. So let's scale this back a little bit. Hit tab, and then let's try one hundred two millimeters. Still not quite one hundred one. All right, now we're not touching. Nice little gap right there, but still real tight. Should be easy to weld. Okay. Now we get into some of the cool stuff. You can make these uh, boxes, tubes, shapes, and whatnot right here. Now it's time to, ooh, let's straighten up this view. Close off these ends right here. And this is where the sheet metal tool gets super useful. You can create a flange and now we're gonna select oops sorry guys now we're gonna go around and select all these inside faces and close this end all at once this guy this guy and this corner right here all right, now you see as we start pulling this up, it automatically miters all these corners for us, which saves you tons of time. Good Lord, I couldn't imagine like flanging this out and then going into a drawing and trying to sketch out all these profiles and then make them work in the bend. Yuck, what a mess. So what we do here is this is 33 millimeters and tab over 45 degrees looking pretty nice hit enter so now I'm gonna go back and show you guys actually let's go over to the other side real quick and just get this taken care of same same flange tool for anybody that missed it pick all these inside edges this guy this guy this guy and una mas start dragging this out and there's our prompt box 33 millimeters tab 45 degrees enter check out our front view look at that it's starting to look like a legendary Norse gods hammer but we go in here and if you try to weld that joint this is gonna be thin sheet metal that will be a straight up nightmare so let's go back to the sheet metal rules that we set up and this is now defaulting to millimeters I'm not sure what's going on there but it all works the same so we're going to edit right here this little pencil tool and now you get your rules so what I'm looking for here is this relief width 
and that's the space between the flanges. So I'm going to put in here, basically you can treat this like an Excel cell and you can put math in here. So we're going to do thickness minus two millimeters. So it's saying we're at two and a half millimeters right now. I don't totally want to close that gap. We need to have some margin of error in there. But as I hit save, watch what happens to this joint right here any moment now. Close. Nope. Alright, that didn't do it. Let's try it again. Modify. Sheet metal rules. Steel. Edit. Bend condition. Oh, I put that in the wrong spot, guys. Let's go back here. Miter slash rip slash seam gap thickness minus two millimeters. Basically just put some math in there. Save. Ah, uh, there we go. See how it closed up all these gaps right here? So now we have really nice tight fit up. After we put that in the bender, we should be in good shape. Now I gotta find that seam that I put in here originally. I believe it is, yeah, down in this corner right here. Okay, so last thing we need to do is close up these ends. So I'm gonna do this side from the bottom up because I'm gonna have to actually break this into two pieces in the end. And I'll do the other side from the top down. And that way when I break this, I'm gonna break in right here at this seam and then this seam's already broken, and then I'll have these two halves. One, have two that I can put together out in the shop after bending. All right, so I believe this is 102 millimeters, tab 45 degrees, and that 102 is way too high, but I can just drag this down See how it just kind of automatically snapped to that corner right there? So nice. I didn't even have to think about it. All right, press OK. All right, this flange is from the bottom up, so this flange we're going to do from the top down. That way when we flip them over, everything looks right. New flange, select this edge. Coming down, tab over to 45 degrees. Now we're in plane. Oh man, wait a sec. Okay, so I accidentally stopped this, pressed enter before. And here's the nice thing you can right click, edit feature, and now we get this menu again. So if you mess up, hit enter too early, or just need to go adjust something later, this is pretty slick tool right here. Let's just jump back into any one of these flanges and adjust the angle or the length. All right, that's looking good to me. So now we've got our basic shape, but we need to add a few little details because we all know this is kind of a boring looking hammer the way it is right now. So you can enter into a sketch right here in sheet metal mode and let's draw ourselves a rectangle. Gonna eyeball this. And then let's find our center. No, come on. Oh, sorry, it's trying to draw a rectangle. Let's do a line. Our line tool. These little uh, deltas here signify center. Now we will kind of draw up this little detail on the bottom. Pretty sure it goes something like this. Okay, and now I want to match this feature right here. I'm going to hit escape to get out of this line tool and stay in sketch. Now I'm going to select this line, hold shift, 
and select the rest of this line. I'm going to go back to the sketch menu, hit mirror. Got these three objects already selected. Now we're just going to select our mirror line, which is the center. And bam. Matchy, matchy. From here, now we can select this, hold shift, select the other side. We got both of these. And now you can just use this like your regular old fusion, what do they call this, model. And we're going to hit extrude, E, and push this feature all the way through. And now we kind of have that cool side detail. It's going to help sell this look. Okay, as we cut through. All right, so now we've got some end detail. Let's come up here to the top, and same thing, create a new sketch. We're going to need to put a little circle in here, so I'm going to hit oh, actually L for line. Got our delta for center. Do circle. I like this uh, center diameter circle because I can usually snap here, find the new delta, and one inch should be plenty to get some weld in there from the back side. Now we're going to select this face, hold shift, this section as well. Again, hit E for extrude. Make sure this drop down menu right here is set to cut and then push this feature all the way through because we want a top and bottom. One for the handle and one for this little circle that sits on the top. Okay, now we'll go back to this sketch. Right click, edit sketch, back in sketch. And if you notice the top of the hammer has a big old circle at the top has some sort of inscription so we're gonna go ahead and make a larger circle that sits on top of this one and I'm just gonna eyeball it we'll say it's about that big press escape to get out of that circle tool and now we can start picking hold shift pick all this up and we hit E for extrude and instead of a cut I want to make a new body because this is a separate feature we're going to cut out all on its own. And we're going to make it, what was our material thickness? 065, I want to say. No, no, no. Backspace 0.065. There we go. Click OK. And then we've got that little dot on the top. And last thing we need to do here is we need to make a plate to go behind this one to kind of close up the space and give us that little extra or texture and depth so we'll go back here to this sketch I believe it's over here on oh I go all the way past it uh -huh. all right right click edit sketch and now we can do another rectangle and we just need it to be bigger than this blue rectangle and smaller than the outside edge of this. So I'm just going to pick something in between. And drag this sucker over here. Okay. Now press escape. We'll get out of our rectangle tool. And really want to pick all this stuff. Hold shift. Select all these faces. And there's several ways to do this, but I'm going to do E extrude new body again. We're going to say this one goes back 0.1 inches. The thickness doesn't really matter because I'm not going to put any flanges on this. So let's hit OK. And if you notice, I kind of just put it into the top of that, which isn't quite right. So we're going to go over here to bodies and we're going to get that moved. If I can get this drop down menu to work. There we go. 
here's body three. So we'll select it right here, click M for move. And now we can move this until it goes behind. There we go. Okay. Now we've got this plate in here. And I don't need to make another one. We're just going to cut two of these plates and then I'll have a second one. All right, guys. I think we are ready to flatten this thing and get it sent to the table. We're going to click create flat pattern instead. I think this one is easier to project the sketch at the end. Okay, let's try this now. So instead we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections. So we'll go one, two, three, four sections. We're gonna cut it right here. So let's start a new sketch on this line and now we'll do our L for line let's find that Delta again I just like doing everything off the of center it makes it easier rectangle center rectangle wait till we see that Delta there we go and extend this all the way past and 0 0.02 inches enter so now let's try this again okay we're gonna go here select this hold shift select this E for extrude and let's see if we can find that arrow Where? there it is we're gonna push this through this automatically goes to cut okie dokie artichokey now let's try and project this onto a new sketch. So make sure we're not in sketch. We need to create a brand new one. Create sketch. This face. We'll hit P for project. Now we're going to select this one and two. And OK. Project that onto a new sketch. Now let's check our work. All right, stop sketch. Come on, drop down menu. All right. So let's turn off these bodies. And looks like our sketch dimensions went through. Let's check. Okay, so we right click over here, save as DXF. And Save this DXF. Now we can go over to our cam. Import. And it looks like everything came across. Even our little gap right here. So let's put a toolpath on this. Merge everything. Control G. Well, no, 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 no. Control U. Ungroup. And I just want to group this half and control G, group this half, control G. All right, now we got our two sides. We'll nest these up in here. Actually, I think this will fit better on the sheet that I have on the table. All right, tool path curve compensation. Here's where you guys are going to have to set up your own settings on your plasma. Um, I've got 0.08 inch lead-ins, 45 degree corners, climb cutting, 
feed rate set at the table and my kerf is 065 inches because I'm using the regular old 65 amp consumables. Click OK. Let's check our lead-ins here. Yes, yes, that's going to work. Output to file. February. Let's call this Thor Hama. All right, now we're ready to go to the table.